1995, we have Ozone Disco. What a name, I kinda wanna go. In March of 1996, a tragic accident happened in Q-Zone City's Ozone Disco. The local universities had just done their yearly graduation ceremonies. The students were looking to celebrate and there was a party being thrown for them at the disco. There were around 350 guests attending that night, even though the building had only been cleared to safely hold 35 people. Due to the large amount of people in such a small place, when the fire broke out, they did not stand much chance of escape. Tragically, around 200 people did not make it out that night. Not only did the fire consume the lives of many, but others were trampled in the chaos of trying to escape. The one fire exit the building had been blocked by the building next door, meaning the large amount of people who fled to it to escape became trapped. It was reported that when entering the building to look for survivors, the bodies were piled up waist high. Survivors of the fire explained how around midnight sparks started flying from the DJ booth shortly after smoke appeared. Party goers thought it was part of the experience, that it was all pyrotechnics to mark the new day. This meant that many did not flee as soon as they should have. All of this combined into a huge tragedy that claimed the lives of so many who were just about to start their lives. Since the incident, the club has been closed and abandoned. However, those who are around the club at night have witnessed some paranormal activity. Some have heard music coming from the club's doors or seen disco lights from a distance. You might think these are just kids who have snuck into party, but others have heard disturbing screams for help, but as they got closer to investigate, the screams fade away. There is a clear warning to those who might try to visit the place today that it's not safe. You might meet a paranormal spirit angry from the tragedy, or you might have a dangerous accident of your own. Coming in at number four, we have Malacanang Palace. Malacanang Palace is the White House of the Philippines. It is the official residence and principal workplace for the President of the Philippines. It was originally built in 1750, so it has a long history, making it perfect for some paranormal happenings. The building has been home to many important people, but has also been a part of revolutions within the country, leading to many tragic passings on the property. In particular, there is one story that during one of the revolts by the people, they stormed and seized the home. They found one presidential worker who is now unknown and made their own justice. Although this is not a confirmed story, it is often told to explain one of the paranormal guests who has been pictured outside of the home. They have been named the Headless ghost. The photo captured shows the outside of the palace with a headless figure facing the camera. It is thought that this poor soul was separated with his head before passing and now walks the halls searching for it. He is not the only ghost that has been spotted on the premises though. There have been sightings of former presidents, such as Manuel Cuzon and Manuel Roxas. There is also a report where Governor Emi Marcos, daughter of Ferdinand Marcos, actually saw Cuzon's ghost at one point during her father's presidency. I guess when you dedicate your life to serving as president, it is hard to let go of the place you call home. If you were to visit, maybe keep your camera handy. You never know who you might just see. Coming in at number three, we have Clark Air Base Hospital. Clark Air Base Hospital was used during World War II and the Vietnam War. It now lays abandoned on a redeveloped Air Force base. It is said that as soon as you enter the destroyed building, you instantly feel the paranormal energy that belongs there. The locals believe it to be cursed and dare not enter. Due to this, it is seen as the most haunted hospital in the country. The hospital has been ravaged by time, most parts overgrown with greenery, with others simply falling apart. The hospital today does still attract ghost hunters. Due to the amount of pain and suffering that occurred during its time, there are plenty of lost spirits trapped. A number of visitors have reported hearing voices echo through the empty halls of the hospital. Some hear screams. It is said that the voices of those trapped are of the soldiers who lost their lives in the war. It seems they feel they have unfinished business in the world. Many would have left behind their families to serve their country. These are not the only patients still staying there though. The first floor ward was home to the hospital's pediatric centre. People have heard the screams of newborn babies and children laughing. One security guard even heard the running footsteps of what sounded like a child. This entity ran straight past him one night while on patrol. He has since refused to patrol within the hospital walls. The hotel did still operate after the war, until a nearby volcano erupted covering the hospital in ash. This was taken as a sign by the locals that nature was warning them to stay away. There are also those who ignore the warnings and venture inside. Just be warned, it seems to have a habit of causing tragedy. Coming in at number two, we have Laparole House. The Laparole House was built by Roberto Laparole in the 1930s. During World War II, the house was used by Japanese soldiers. They were reportedly a nasty group of brutes. They attacked local women, tortured suspected ties, 
and even ended their life once they received any information that they had. The house is said to have seen many horrors due to all of this and the home was never the same after the soldiers left. Those who had been there within this time warned others to stay away. The house transferred ownership after the death of the head of the Laparal clan. They attempted to maintain the home but the years and horrors do show on the homes old exterior. The house has withstood much more than those around it both man made and natural disasters. To everyone's surprise the house was still standing after the deadly earthquake of 1990. In 2013 the home was turned into a museum. It was at this point that we started to hear more details about the hauntings inside. The show has been visited on many ghost haunting shows along with being featured in a film. Those who have visited the house have told of what they found and why the house is visited to often by paranormal investigators. One visitor claimed that they heard screams coming from the lower sections of the home. They rushed to go see if someone was hurt but they found nothing. As they read more about the home they believe this could have been linked to where the torture happened during the war. Others felt a dark presence in various sections of the home, cold spots or a feeling of sadness that disappeared as quickly as they had felt it. Some said they felt watched like there is an entity in the home that no one can see but it is watching all who visit closely. One man claimed he heard water running in the rooms but when he went to turn it off there was nothing there. Not even a source for any water to be coming from. The home is haunted by the ghosts of the past, but might also hold an ancient entity that causes you to feel watched. Either way, this is not a home I'll be visiting anytime soon. And finally, coming in at number one, we have Manghit Cave. Manghit Cave got its name from the smell of the accumulated bat droppings inside the cave. Located in the central Philippines, this is a scary location due to more than the hauntings. Many people are scared of entering dark and possibly unstable caves, so this one contains more than just the fear of confined spaces. The cave is popular by those who like to explore deep into caves in their spare time. But do it at your own risk. The cave is said to be haunted by lost caving groups. The cave does not offer much light, and the deep you go the more lost you get. There have been a number of groups that have gone lost throughout the years with no remains ever recovered. There are so many hidden corners within its maze you will never be found. Those who explore it today have encountered a number of paranormal occurrences. Some reports seeing shadows not cast by them or their group like there is someone else with them. Others have heard footsteps scrambling around as if in panic. Finally the further in you travel the more you hear a distant scream of help. Often only one of two members of your team will hear this. No matter how far towards the voice you go it will keep seeming out of reach. This causes people to go further and further into the caving system until their team bring them to their senses to head back. Those who have experienced this believe it may be how the others have gone missing. Some say there may be a demon living deep within the cave looking to bring the lost souls to feast on. Number 5 on this list is the Myrtles Plantation. The Myrtles Plantation is located in St. Francisville, Louisiana and is home to a plethora of ghosts. The plantation was established in 1796 and is said to have been built on an ancient burial grounds. These burial grounds have obviously contributed to the deep spiritual presence that it has and the reports that there are 12 different ghosts that currently occupy the space. However, the spirit that is most commonly seen wandering the place wasn't from these burial grounds at all, but an incident that occurred at the plantation many many years ago. Chloe. A slave of the plantation in the early 1800s was eavesdropping one day on a conversation between the family who owned the plantation. The punishment was swift and drastic and they cut off one of Chloe's ears so that she would never do it again. Chloe obviously didn't take too kindly to this and even though she knew it would most likely mean her death, wanted to retaliate. She did so by poisoning a birthday cake which in turn killed two of the owner's daughters. For this, she was put to death and executed. However, it is said that Chloe's spirit still wanders the ground to this day and is the most commonly spotted ghost at this plantation. She will be wearing a turban to cover up her ear that was chopped off when she was alive. If you ever see this ghost, people say that you immediately get filled with a deep and solemn depression that hangs over you for quite some time. People speculate that the deep depression that you feel after encountering her may have been the way that she felt while she was alive. Number 4 on this list is the Whaley House. The Whaley House is located in San Diego, California and is said by some to be the most haunted home in all of the United States. The ghost who haunts the home is not your standard phantom, in fact it is the spirit of a convicted high profile robber from the 1850s. 
Yankee Jim had a good run of thievery, but was inevitably unable to avoid the gallows and was hung off of the back of a wagon in 1852. Thomas Whaley was at that hanging and watched as Yankee Jim died. This did not deter him though from purchasing the very land where it happened. It was at this spot that he proceeded to build what is known today as the Whaley House. It didn't take very long at this home though before the Whaleys quickly realized the errors of their ways. It is said that it took only a few weeks of living there before they started to notice strange ongoings at the home. Doors would slam without anyone around them at all. They may even lock themselves as well with you inside. Footsteps could be heard moving around the home at all hours throughout the day. These footsteps were large. The sound of a big boot attacking the ground. The sound of Yankee Jim. In the entirety of that time the family owned the home, for over 100 years there was never a time that they said they weren't haunted in this house. After the home was donated and turned into a museum, the sightings became more exaggerated. Different phantoms started appearing, screams were heard, items would float from place to place. A parapsychologist even reported seeing a phantom dog run through the home at one point. Frankly, I don't believe all of these secondary claims. It kind of feels like people's imaginations ran with the idea of having a haunting once it turned into a museum. But I do believe the ghost of Yankee Jim to be a very real thing. If you do go to this home, make sure you have no valuables with you, or Yankee Jim may just claim them for himself. Number 3 on this list is Bachelors Grove Cemetery. We just spoke about the most haunted home in America, so it's only fitting that we talk about the most haunted cemetery in America. The Bachelors Grove Cemetery is located in Chicago, Illinois and has potentially the widest array of ghost stories that I've ever heard of. It's not the biggest graveyard in the world, in fact it doesn't even operate as one anymore. It was established in the 1840s and practically abandoned in the mid 1900s. There were rumors that the mafia used to use this place as a spot to dump bodies, as it's reasonably secluded and nobody could see them do it. It secluded nature, rumors tied to the mafia and the inevitable vandalism that it did receive could all be reasons why it's haunted today. Now I was talking about the mafia and gangsters. Well one of the biggest ghostly sightings at this cemetery is actually a gangster car. The graveyard is right next to a road and people driving down that road have reported seeing the distinct image of a vehicle in the middle of the road resembling a mafia vehicle. People have actually fully swerved off of the road and crashed their own cars and then later realized that nothing was there at all. Others have seen a whole farmhouse appear in the graveyard but when they tried to go to it, it completely disappeared. Cars and farmhouses, these are big apparitions and lead me to believe that the spiritual presence in this cemetery has got to be really strong. In 1991, the Chicago Sun released a very famous picture of the graveyard in which there appears to be the figure of a woman sitting on a gravestone, all in white. The photographer behind this picture claims that there wasn't anybody there when he took the picture and it only came up on the camera. With over 100 ghostly sightings in this cemetery, I do believe that it's claimed to be the most haunted cemetery in America. It's well earned. Number 2 on this list is Waverly Hills Sanatorium. Waverly Hills Sanatorium is located in Louisville, Kentucky and was home to thousands of deaths. At least 8,000 if we're really trying to be exact. The sanatorium was built in 1910 and the main patients that it dealt with were victims of the white plague. Back then there was no known cure and many of the patients died to this disease. That wasn't the only way that they died here though. It is believed that doctors would use these dying patients as guinea pigs for some drugs or treatments that they were developing. However, However, oftentimes this would just result in the patient's death. After the white plague had largely been dealt with, the space was transformed into a geriatric hospital. The liberties that the doctors and the nurses took, they got even worse when this happened. Electroshock therapy was utilized. Major injustices and mistreatments were done on the patients from the nurses. It really all went bad. In the 1980s, this spot was shut down for good, but by that point, the damage had already been done. Now Waverly Hills is one of the most haunted locations in America. People say that there are constant footsteps all over the place even though there's hardly anyone in the building. Doors will slam and lock when no one's even close to them. Phantoms and shadows will stalk people throughout the hallways of the building, seemingly waiting for a moment to strike. Screams and shrieks of former patients can be heard ringing throughout the corridors of the building. Many ghosts haunt the death tunnel which was a place where they used to move the bodies of the dead. In room 502, 
There have been reported attacks on people, where they have felt their bodies seize up and get thrown to the ground. In that room, two nurses committed suicide. Apparently one of them jumped out of the window and the other one hung themselves because they couldn't live with the ongoing death that happened in this place. This building has seen way too many horrible things in its existence to just be a building anymore. Feel free to look it up on the internet if you're interested, but don't go visit this in person. Number one on this list is the Eastern State Penitentiary. This prison is located in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania and when you hear the types of things that went on at this place, it's no wonder that it's haunted as badly as it is. The facility was built in 1829 and was in service for roughly 150 years. Now if this place had a motto, then it would have to be something about solitude. That was the theme at Eastern State Penitentiary. Being alone. If you were a prisoner there, then you had your very own tiny little cell where you lived alone, ate alone, slept alone, and just existed alone. The thing is, it wasn't just the cell either. If you had to go to the washroom or leave the cell for any reason, then the guards would put a bag over your head and they would walk you to wherever you're going. The only thing that you will ever know if you go to this place is your cell. The mental strain that that amount of solitude would have had on those prisoners, it would have been insane. This wasn't the only form of punishment though. There were reports of chaining your tongue to your wrist and leaving you like that. They would dunk you in water and then they would hang you outside in the winter until your body literally froze. And honestly, there was a lot more horrible things that they did too that I don't even want to get into. Either way, due to all the horrors, due to all the death, due to all the atrocities that went on in these walls, the prison now boasts its fair share of ghosts. It is currently open to the public, however I would not recommend going and checking it out. They have various cell blocks that are all known for different ghostly experiences. One of them has extreme echoing voices of laughter as if somebody was going insane. One of them has what it feels like evil shadowy figures jumping from wall to wall. The bloodthirst that these figures have is reportedly palpable. Another cell block has the visions of the dead faces that appear battered and bloodied right in front of you. Gary Johnson, who works to upkeep the prison, had a harrowing experience here before. He was opening up a cell block to clean it when all of a sudden his body stopped functioning and he was completely paralyzed but also totally aware. He felt as if spirits were invading his body and hurting his mind as he was frozen. Finally he was released and ran from the scene. This prison is haunted to its core and it must be avoided at all costs. Number 5 on this list is Tranquil Sanatorium in British Columbia. Tranquil Sanatorium has quite an extensive and tragic history to it which has caused its walls to be the home to many undead spirits. A sanatorium, if you weren't familiar, is an establishment which has the sole purpose of housing those with long term illnesses and is often associated with tuberculosis. The one that we're talking about right now is no different. It was built in 1907 as a facility to treat people with tuberculosis. However, it didn't stay like this for very long. The purpose of the facility eventually changed to become an insane asylum. It acted as this mental institute for a while until finally becoming abandoned in the late 1980s. Due to its deep history with death, disease, mental illness, it's no wonder that the Tranquil Sanatorium is now deeply haunted. The layout of this facility screams something out of a Stephen King book. It has several buildings that are connected by poorly lit underground tunnels. The building itself looks all too eerie from the outside as well with dirty cream colored walls that have seen far better days as rot and mold slowly devour them. Visitors of this place report feeling extremely uneasy. A common note for most people that visit is the presence of orbs. Strange balls of light that flutter throughout the building and then disappear. Some people have reported seeing a ghostly apparition on the 6th floor. This ghost takes the form of a woman not older than 30. She appears to be crying and screaming. The tunnels are said to be particularly haunted. People have reported screams coming from nowhere, flashes of movement, menacing and animalistic groans that make you feel as if somebody is right behind you. Children can also be heard playing every now and again in some of the more open areas of the building. Clearly this place's dark history has impacted it greatly and just because physical humans 
decided to abandon it in the 80s doesn't mean that it was truly abandoned for good. Number four on this list is the Firkins House. The Firkins House is part of Fort Edmonton Park, which you guessed it, is located in Edmonton, Alberta. Fort Edmonton Park is a little tourist attraction that has buildings from 1885, 1905, and 1920 to represent the homes of the time. One of the houses is the Firkins House. This home is interesting because during my research, I couldn't find any particular evidence of wrongdoings or tragic events at this home. In fact, for the most part, it seems like a pretty normal house. People have lived there before and no harm has befell them, but it seems that after they moved out and the home was donated, that's when things started to go a little bit haywire. There are reportedly three ghosts or demons that haunt this home, each one scarier and more dangerous than the next. The first one is the ghost of a beautiful floating woman who is dressed in all white. People have said that they've spotted her in the windows of the home looking out at them or slowly drifting throughout the living room. The second one is the ghost of a little boy. The boy will appear to certain people looking extremely ill. It is currently unknown if this boy died in and around the area or what disease he is suffering from, but it is said that he resides in the home with the woman in white. The third being is by far the scariest of all three. A ventriloquist dummy that will appear in the home or in the cupboards. This thing can move all by itself and talk by itself. It is very similar to the popular horror franchise Chucky and it's said by some to be seeking to harm the living. I'm not sure if the ghost of the ventriloquist has taken over this dummy or if the dummy has taken on its own persona, but I definitely do not want to go anywhere where the primary residence is a demon puppet. Number three on this list is the Five Fisherman Restaurant. This is a restaurant in Halifax, Nova Scotia known for its exceptional oysters and also its ghostly inhabitants. The ground that this restaurant sits on wasn't always utilized for serving up fish and chips though. In fact, it has a very long history. In the early 1800s is when the building went up and for a long time it acted as the town's only school. Nothing ghoulish or demonic about that. However, at around the turn of the century the school moved and the building took on a new purpose. It became the mortuary for Halifax and made its dealings with the dead. Now not every mortuary is going to become haunted, but this one had quite a lot to deal with over the years. In 1912 the unsinkable ship, the Titanic, sunk. It sunk roughly 640 kilometers off of the eastern shores of Canada and therefore the closest places to assist with the rescue was these eastern provinces. Halifax acted as the leader in these rescue processes and because of that the mortuary had an onslaught of bodies of people whom had died on the ship. Five years after that tragedy, Halifax incurred one of their own with the massive Halifax explosion. This was where a munitions ship exploded and it killed roughly 2,000 people just like that. This mortuary served as the primary designation for both of these incidents and due to the unnatural deaths here, it makes sense that some spirits have clung on. Guests and employees alike have reported seeing ghosts all over this mortuary that turned restaurant. One of the dishwashers reported running out of the restaurant when he looked up from what he was doing and was staring directly at a ghost like Spectre. The restaurant has attempted to have serious renovations done, however I don't think that any amount of structural change will get these spirits to rest for good. Number two on this list is the Frank Slide. Now even though the Frank Slide sounds like it could be a fun, popular dance move that takes over TikTok for a few weeks, it is far more morbid than that. On April 29th in 1903 in the mining town of Frank, which at that time was part of the Northwest Territories but it is now a section of Alberta, there was a horrible tragedy. 110 million tons of limestone and rock came tumbling down in one of Canada's biggest landslides ever. This fell onto part of the town of Frank. Frank was located right next to Turtle Mountain, which after extensive mining had grown unstable. On April 29th, it all came crashing down and claimed the lives of 70 to 90 people. It is still to this day Canada's most deadly landslide to ever occur in history and was a horrible tragedy that can only remind us how fleeting life can be. I think the craziest part about this landslide as well is that it wasn't just miners who were killed. Their wives, their families, all of them died at the hands of the Frank Slide. The remains of these bodies were never recovered either as the damage from the slide was far too devastating. Where all of this happened is now a section of a town called Crow's Nest Pass and over a century later the ghosts of the dead still haunt the area. This place is somewhere where visitors have reported feeling very unsafe. They say that the overall feelings of uneasiness are almost too much to bear and that they have to leave. Cries, 
howls, screams. This can all be heard late at night as you're trying to sleep. Lanterns will be seen in the night walking around at the hands of unknown apparitions. It is basically a full ghost town of people who never deserve to die in the first place, all wanting to get a second just to feel their lives again as they were so unfairly ripped away from them. Definitely one of Canada's most horrific tragedies and now home to one of its most haunted locations. Number one on this list is the Banff Springs Hotel. This hotel is located in Banff, Alberta and is truly one of the creepiest places that I've ever read about. Now first off, I want to note the hotel itself looks gorgeous on the outside. The beautiful nature it is surrounded by is stunning and the hotel gives me some serious Harry Potter Hogwarts vibes. However, when I say that this place is surrounded by nature, I really mean it. It is totally out on its own with no other buildings in sight at all. The secluded site has been around for 132 years and has housed its fair share of visitors. Some of these visitors have had some incredible stays. I mean, when you look it up online, the hotel has a 4.7 Google rating. So, I mean, it's pretty freaking good. Some of the guests, though, they never checked out. In the 1920s, a couple was set to have their wedding at this hotel. On the day of the ceremony, though, the bride, while she was walking down one of the hotel's beautiful marble staircases, tripped and fell, smacking her head on her descent and dying on the spot. This bride's spirit is one of the most notable sightings people have had when they're staying at this hotel. It's it's said that they often see a phantom in a wedding dress ascending and descending the stairs very quickly. She's also been seen in the ballroom dancing alone, potentially dreaming of the dance that she wanted so desperately to have with the husband that she never got to marry. In 1975, a longtime bellman of the Hotel Sam died there. Since then, sightings of Sam have been pretty consistent. One story details how two women lost their room key and called the front desk to go and get it. The front desk person sent someone to go and open the room for these ladies. When that person had got there though, the ladies were already in the room and said that another bellman had let them in. They described Sam to a T when they spoke about the bellman who helped them out. Instances like this have occurred time and time again at the hotel with many people believing his spirit is still working there. Finally with this hotel, you have room 873. Room 873 is rumored to be the home of a gruesome murder. One evening a family was staying there and the father for some unknown reason lost his mind murdering his family and himself. After completely refurbishing the room, the hotel put it back in service. But now people who have stayed there report hearing the screams and the cries as if they were still dying. If you have to stay at this hotel, definitely avoid room 873. From islands filled with creepy haunted dolls to cemeteries haunted by everything you can think of, Mexico has some beautiful scenery, lovely beaches, and some deeply haunted locations. My advice? Stick to the beaches. What is good my friends, my name is Nicholas Playlog, and in this video we're going to be looking at the top 5 haunted places in Mexico that you should never visit. Let's get into it. Number five on this list is the Island of Dolls. This place has got to be one of the creepiest spots on the entire planet if you ask me. Located in the canals near Mexico City, the Island of Dolls got its name from the residents that live in the trees. If you hadn't guessed already, those residents are creepy looking dolls. They weren't the only ones living here in the past though. The haunting of this island is deeply tied with a man named Don Julian Santana Barrera. In the mid 20th century, Don Julian was living with his wife and children in Mexico City. However, However, for reasons unknown to us, he decided to leave his family and isolate himself on an island in Teixulo Lake. He was completely alone on this island until he made a chilling discovery. The body of a young girl had washed ashore and it was clear that she had drowned in this lake far earlier. This shook Don Julian to his core and his already fragile mind was tested even more. Now it's rumored that he believed the spirit of this girl was talking to him, that her ghost was haunting the island and that she had a mission for him to accomplish. So when a doll floated through the lake and found its way onto the island a little bit after her body had been found, it fit into this narrative perfectly. Don Julian believed that the ghost of this girl could only be appeased if he took this doll and hung it from a tree on his island. He went and did this, but then his obsession for these dolls grew. Whether he was truly being haunted by this ghostly spirit or his mind had deteriorated to a point of no return is unknown, but we do know that he dedicated the next 50 years of his life to filling this island with dolls. Dolls that he found in the canals, in the garbage on the streets. Sometimes they were missing limbs or there was only a head left of them, but it didn't matter to Don Julian. He would still hang them regardless. Nowadays, the island is filled with thousands of dolls who look like they've seen far better days. What caps this story off and made its legend ripple through Mexican lore is the manner in which our island keeper died. Drowning in Teixulo Lake, exactly how the young girl had done so, 
50 years earlier. Today it is believed that his spirit along with the young girls remain on this island. Locals say if you were to visit this place you must bring a doll of your own or else the spirit of Don Julian will haunt you even after you leave. Number 4 on this list is the House of Mummies. The House of Mummies is a small museum that is home to a plethora of mummies. What makes this place so interesting is that no one intended for these bodies to be mummified. Guanajuato, where this museum is located, has a very unique climate and soil. In 1833, that region was going through a bad outbreak of disease and there were a lot of deaths. Some of the bodies that were buried during this time were later found to have been naturally mummified or had mummified themselves. People were fascinated and took them to a specific building which later has been transformed into a museum. Now there's a lot of lore surrounding these bodies but the general consensus is that there is still a bit of life to these mummies. People have reported feeling their living presence when they go and visit this museum. They've also said that they have felt them watching them as they go through or have noticed their bodies turn to look at them. It truly sounds like something straight out of a Scooby Doo book but then again so does natural mummification. Locals even say that they believe some of the mummies sneak out of this museum sometimes and cause trouble in the night when nobody's looking. Number 3 on this list is Claudia Mirangro's house. Claudia was a woman with a decently easy life who had inherited a reasonable amount of money from her parents passing. When she was younger she got married and she and her husband bought a home in the city of Queretaro. It was at this residence that they had their three children. Alfredo was the youngest, Anna was the middle child and Claudia, named after her mother, was the eldest. Apparently the family had some happy years living there but that didn't last forever. Claudia Marangros mental state started to decline and she went down a bit of a rabbit hole. It got to a point where her husband could no longer stand his wife and he left her and the kids. Poor idea to leave the children in the hands of this woman though. On April 24th, 1989, the voices in her head got far too loud. She was convinced that she was possessed by a demon and that everyone in the city that they were living had turned into spirits. Her madness reached a point of no return and as the voices beckoned her to do so, she grabbed the knife and went into her children's room, killing them one by one. Hours later, the police were called due to somebody reporting heavy crying. They found the mother covered in blood, mumbling to herself, clutching a bloody knife on the floor. She apparently doesn't remember the incident at all and wholeheartedly believes that a demon was controlling her actions. Claudia went to jail for a long time and is still there to this day, but her children's spirits, they didn't go anywhere. People have reported hearing screams and shrieks coming from that home. The pitter patter of tiny childlike feet running through it. Someone even reported seeing what looked to be a demon child staring at them through the windows. A death like that from a demon possessed mother has made this home one of the most haunted places in Mexico. Number 2 on this list is La Posada de Sol. La Posada de Sol is a hotel that is located in the center of Mexico City. Calling it a hotel is a little bit of a stretch though because at this point it is completely out of commission, covered in graffiti and a shell of its former self. Even though the exterior of this building has seen far better days, the inside still boasts incredible architecture making people wonder what could have been. With over 600 rooms, a casino, a theater, a human sized chessboard, galleries and much more, this place had aspirations of being the finest hotel in Mexico. That dream was never fully reached though as construction of the hotel was never finished and had to be halted in 1945. Fernando Saldana Galvin was the man behind this unfinished beauty. He envisioned this hotel to be a centerpiece of Mexico City, a place that people would flock to from around the world, a true beauty that would stand the test of time. Because of this he poured his blood, sweat and tears into this place. Problem is that a hotel of this caliber doesn't get made with blood, sweat or tears. It gets made with money. In 1945 the hotel's construction was stopped because Fernando's debt was insurmountable. The stress and anxiety of never finishing his hotel and not being able to pay off his bills got the better of him and he hung himself in the hotel yard. After his death rumors began to sprout about the true intentions of this hotel. Some people stating that Fernando was actually part of a cult and this site was meant to be used as a place for satanic rituals. Other unfounded rumors surfaced that Fernando had actually killed his wife and kids before taking his own life. One thing is certain though, he definitely left this hotel haunted after he died and not just by his spirit either. A girl was said to have been murdered in the basement at this hotel in its early days and her spirit still haunts the walls as well. There's an altar in one of the top rooms of this place that people say you must leave candy on. If you don't, then you will be haunted by her undead spirit even after you leave. Number 1 on this list is Santa 
Paula Cemetery. The Santa Paula Cemetery is located in Guadalajara. The initial purpose of the cemetery was to be a spot designated for those who died of influenza and other epidemics that were ravaging Mexico. In the many years that it's been active though, lore surrounding the spirits that could be potentially living there has exploded. One of its most notable spirits is that of a young boy who died when he was 10 years old. The boy's name was Nachito and he died over a century ago in 1882. One evening a massive storm was sweeping through Guadalajara. This was a problem for Nachito though because he was deathly afraid of the dark, so much so that he had to have two torches lit outside of his window every evening. That night when his parents sent him to sleep though, the torches went out due to the storm and the next morning when his parents came to wake him, they found him dead where he slept. The cause of his death was a heart attack and it was confirmed that Nachito got so scared of the dark that he had caused himself to have a heart attack and died. They had the funeral shortly after and buried him in the ground, but the next morning when his grieving mother came to visit him, the coffin had been taken out of the ground. His body was still inside the coffin so they buried him again except the same thing happened. In fact, they repeated this process 9 times before realizing that he can't be buried underground because he is too scared of the dark. Therefore, they made a special above ground stone coffin that would always have access to the light. However, it is said that even though this coffin was made, his spirit still haunts the area. Another famous story about this cemetery is in regards to a vampire. Locals say that a vampire was killed by some people who drove a stake through its heart and then buried the body at this cemetery. A while later, the stone marking that had indicated where the vampire had been buried was cracked and a tree was growing through it. They say that if that tree ever dies, the vampire will return and seek vengeance on the people in surrounding areas. This is so rooted in the lore there that they've even built a fence around this tree so no one can come in and wreck it. There are a bunch more stories of how haunted this cemetery is with sightings of demons and ghosts that I sadly do not have time to cover in this video, but I highly recommend looking this place up if you want to scare. Coming in at number 5 we have Tower of London. The Tower of London is most famous for housing the crown jewels. It was also known throughout history for housing some famous prisoners in their final days before execution. It has been the centre of many historical events so it's no surprise that it's haunted by the ghosts of the past. One of the most famous ghosts that haunts the tower is Guy Fawkes. As the rhyme goes, remember remember the 5th of November, gunpowder, treason and plot. I see no reason and why gunpowder treason should ever be forgot. Every November 5th, British people hold a bonfire to remember the gunpowder treason. In 1605, Guy Fawkes attempted to blow up the Houses of Parliament. He was hoping to kill the king. His plan was foiled when one of his conspirators told the police of the plan that night before the explosion was going to take place. Guy Fawkes was taken to the Tower of London while awaiting his trial. He was sentenced to be publicly executed and brought out to the square of the tower. He spent his last days in captivity activity in the tower as well as passing away there. Since then there have been sightings or whispers of forks from those visiting the towers, especially around the 5th of November when his spirit is the most restless. He is not the only famous ghost who is stuck around the tower, there have been many sightings of Anne Boleyn. She is often seen walking around various rooms after closing by security. Others have seen her staring through the window of the room which she was once imprisoned. A couple of guests have entered that room and heard a distant sound of a woman crying for help. It is believed her spirit is stuck here since her life was ended so tragically. Coming in at number 4 we have Pendle Hill. Pendle Hill might seem like a nice place for a hike in Lancashire but there is much more than that to it. Since 1612 the land has been haunted due to the actions of the town's people. The Pendle witch trials are among the most famous of the witch trials in English history. There were 11 on trial for the use of witchcraft. They were accused for being responsible for the deaths of 10 people who had recently passed. Only one of the accused was found not not guilty, the other 10 were to be executed for their use of witchcraft. Once they were found guilty, they were each hanged for their crimes and buried under the hill. There was one witch in particular who was feared. She was referred to as Alice Nutter. She was wealthier than the other witches and was seen to have the most power. She shocked the town with her complete silence during her trial. These 10 witches now haunt the area. The people of East Lancashire remain cautious of the witches of Pendle Hill. It has been investigated by many ghost hunting teams. Teams. Once claimed that there are more than just the spirits of the witches in the area, they claim.
claimed there were also children and airmen who were bombed during the war. The area seems to attract tragedy and many have passed there. Locals refuse to go anywhere near the hill after dark as there have been so many sightings of the ghosts. Some have even seen the witches on the hill after dark. One local said they saw what looked like 10 women performing some kind of ritual. Could this be a tribute or the spirits of the witches attempting to communicate with the living? In at number 3 we have Theatre Royal. The Theatre Royal sits in London on Drury Lane. During the late 17th century the theatre was one of the leading theatres in all of London. There were many famous actors who performed at the West End location on a regular basis. The theatre grew in popularity after the Second World War when they pioneered musicals such as Oklahoma, My Fair Lady and Miss Saigon. It is now owned by the famous composer Andrew Lloyd Webber. Although it's no longer the most prestigious theatre in London, it is one of the first and the longest open. Today it is open with a production of Frozen. What a classic. But it is still one of the most haunted locations in London. There have been many people who have passed through the hall since it opened in the 1700s. There are many stories of tragedies that happened here and spirits that could never leave. Although there have been ghostly sightings, the performers see it as an omen of good luck for an upcoming performance. So they're not so much feared but more so welcomed before a show. The most famous ghost is the man in grey. He is a tall man dressed from the 18th century with a top hat and powdered wig holding a prop sword as though he was about to step on stage to perform. There is a story told about why he haunts the theatre. Apparently the man in grey was preparing for his performance when he was stabbed. By who? We will never know. He then walked up into a side passage next to the royal viewing box. He was walled in so thick that no one heard him scream. It is unclear why anyone wanted to do this to the man. His remains were found over a hundred years later and there was finally an explanation for all of the sightings. So if you happen to see him during your visit, try not to get too scared. It means the show will go well. Go see Frozen, it's gonna be a bop. Coming in at number 2 we have Hampton Court Palace. The palace was built in 1514 for Cardinal Thomas Wolsey, the chief minister of King Henry VIII. When the chief fell out of grace with the king, he gave him the palace in an attempt to save face for his family. It soon became the king's favoured residence he then commissioned to have the palace expanded. It is one of the only surviving palaces out of the many the king owned. The house is currently owned by Queen Elizabeth II and the crown. Today the palace is open to the public and a major tourist attraction. The palace is well known for its ghosts. This was a key selling point when open to the public. They knew that the ghosts who live within the walls would give the guests a visit to remember, one of the most seen spirits is that of Jane Seymour who died in 1537. She was the king's third and most beloved wife. She had given the king the son he had longed for. After Prince Edward was born, Jane passed due to complications with the birth. While delighted to have his son, the king was devastated at the sudden loss of his perfect queen. A pale figure in a long white dress is reported to appear on the silver stick stairs which once led up to the room in which Jane gave birth and then passed away. Jane is not only one of King Henry's wives that haunts the halls. Henry's fifth queen, Catherine Howard, had also been seen around the halls. Catherine was known for her wild ways. Her ghost is also known to be more vocal and sighted more often than that of Jane. Catherine was beheaded at the tower in 1542. She was only 19 when she passed. She had been accused of adultery and treason. It is claimed that while she was being transported to the gallows, she broke free. She ran screaming through the halls, begging the king to have mercy on her. She never reached Henry and she would never see him again. It is said she now spends eternity screaming in anguish through those same halls. Coming in at number 1 we have Stonehenge. No one knows where Stonehenge came from, it has always been surrounded in mystery. Some archaeologists think it was created in 3000 BC to 2000 BC but it's unclear how they would have the machinery to carve the stones or lift them into place. It is one of the most famous landmarks in the United Kingdom and is now protected to preserve it. It might be strange to believe now but back in 1915 Stonehenge was up for public auction. Cecil Chubb had no intention to buy the landmark when he went to the auction that day. But when the bids were slow, he managed to win the land for $6,600. Although he had not planned on owning the land or the landmark, once he did, he wanted to restore it. It had fallen into neglect with its past owner and needed some maintenance. He decided that he would fence off the monument and begin charging one shilling for admission to pay for a guard and the restorations needed to restore it. There were a group of Celtic pagans named the Druids. They claimed that their people built the structure and used it as a place of worship. The group hoped to continue to hold their annual summer solstice ceremony there as they believed their ancestors did. The previous owner of Stonehenge had banned them for using it as it was on his land. This led the druids to curse him. They said for as long as they are denied access to their sacred land then the curse will follow the owner. Just one year after the curse the owner lost his only son and heir to his fortune and land. Four months
months later he would pass away himself, leaving everything to his widow who put the estate up for auction. Chubb was aware of the curse and did not want some fate to take his own family. He decided to gift Stonehenge to the British government, with one condition that those who live near the monument visit it for free as he did as a child. It is said the curse still remains, along with the ghosts of the ancestors of the druids who were buried there long ago. They watch over the land to make sure their descendants are still connected and no one is mistreating the sacred monument. To this day, the British government does allow the druids to perform their ceremonies each year, until 2019 when the lockdowns forced them to cancel any and all in person celebrations at Stonehenge. The senior druid spoke out against this warning, saying that this move would not end well for anyone connected to the land. Number five on this list is Iwo Jima. Iwo Jima is one of the many Bonin Islands that is located in the Pacific Ocean, pretty far away from the Japanese mainland. There are actually several reasons why you should never visit this island aside from the fact that it's haunted. This island was the location of some very important battles in World War II fought between the United States and the Japanese. This island currently houses a Japanese military base of self defense on it, and things were not that much different in World War II. The battle that the Japanese and the Americans had lasted for 40 days, and thousands of troops died brutal deaths on its shores. The current troops who are stationed here have reported sightings of ghostly apparitions that look to be in World War II outfits. These are apparently the dead soldiers from all those years ago. Their souls have yet to leave this island and are rumored to be forever marching along its shores. Like I said before though, this haunting isn't the only reason you shouldn't go here. For starters, it's a military base of self defense now and completely closed off to the public. If you were to go, then at the very least you'd be arrested for trespassing. You also shouldn't visit this place because it houses Mount Suribachi. Mount Suribachi is a 161 meter tall volcano that is currently considered to be the most dangerous volcano on the planet. It isn't as big as Yellowstone by any means, but it is far more active and people believe that it is likely to erupt in the next 100 years. This would be extremely detrimental for the people on the island, but would also cause massive tidal waves that could end up killing thousands on the shores of Japan and China. This coupled with the military base, coupled with the fact that undead World War II spirits still roam the grounds, makes this place a hard pass for me. Number 4 on this list is the Whispering Tunnel. The Whispering Tunnel is honestly kind of scary as it is, a long thin tunnel that is super dark and doesn't look very well kept. The scare factor is multiplied exponentially though when you throw in the fact that there's a ghost who's haunting it. Now there are multiple stories associated with this tunnel, the two biggest ones involving a murder. One story depicts the tale of a young girl who was brutally murdered as she was passing through the tunnel and now her spirit is said to haunt the tunnel. The other story talks about how a group of sick teenagers murdered a 21 year old in the tunnel by burning him and leaving his remains there to be found later. There are also some ties to some ancient Buddhist monks who believe this area was simply a hotspot for spirits and all things paranormal. It's possible that none of these things are true, but it's also possible that all of them happened and with the reports of the ongoings in this tunnel, I tend to lean to the latter. People who pass through this tunnel often don't make it to the end. Now that's not because the spirits have murdered them or taken over their soul or anything like that, but they've reported saying that they just can't force themselves to make it through. There have been countless reports of a series for boating presence the further you go into the tunnel, as if the air gets thick with a dark spirit and your innate senses tell you to stay away. It's also been said that people have felt the sensation of being pushed or pulled before typically in the direction of where they entered. Also, considering this is called the whispering tunnel, there have obviously been reports of whispers and scratches. These whispers often sound like those of a little girl further pushing the narrative that a girl has been murdered here. Truly a terrifying tunnel that probably isn't worth the scary walkthrough. Number 3 on this list is Camp Hansen. The legend associated with Camp Hansen is also sometimes referred to as the Lone Soldier. Camp Hansen is a United States Marine military base that is located in Okinawa. The camp currently has over 6,000 American troops stationed there to this day. It should also be noted that this was an area of interest in World War II, similarly to our other entry of the island of Iwo Jima and saw its fair share of death. One soldier's soul seems to have clung onto this place though and doesn't seem to want to leave. The camp has several gates to get inside, but the one under particular scrutiny here is gate 3. It's at this gate that the ghost of a dead World War II soldier will appear. It's said that he will show himself to you and be wearing a World War II outfit that is covered in blood, seemingly the outfit that he died in. He will approach you and ask you for a cigarette, and then if you give it to him, quietly smoke alongside you until he's done. From my research, this ghost isn't evil in nature and doesn't want to harm you, he simply wants a smoke. But soldiers that got positioned at this gate started to get extremely creeped out. So much so that the gate has actually been 
been shut down and is no longer in service. The amount of stories that people have compiled about sightings and interactions with this ghost was so much that the people who run the base thought it was best to leave the man be and just shut the gate down for good. This camp, and more specifically the gate, is considered by most to be one of the most haunted places in all of Japan. Number two on this list is the Roundhouse Schoolhouse. Now, the Roundhouse Schoolhouse is an abandoned schoolhouse in Japan that was constructed in a perfect circle. The exterior of the building looks super eerie, and the fact that desks and school supplies still remain inside of it, it adds to the overall creepiness. The schoolhouse was built back in 1906 and operated as any schoolhouse would until 1970 when it closed down for economic reasons. Now, what's interesting about this school and the hauntings that are associated to it is that there doesn't seem to be any big inciting incident to cause ghosts to take up residence here. Typically, we hear something about a murder or a something of that nature that caused a spirit to haunt that particular place. This schoolhouse doesn't have any of that. It was a regular school right up until it closed. However, that didn't stop ghosts and demons from calling it home after people left it behind. Rumors started circulating about this place and how people who stumbled upon it had heard screams or seen ghostly apparitions looking down on them from the windows. Soon it became a spot of interest to people seeking a paranormal thrill, but these thrill seekers were met with something that they weren't prepared for. People started going and when they came back, it was as if they'd been through a battle. They were shell shocked. They told tales of how they felt frozen where they stood and how it felt as demons were invading their thoughts when they were there. Some people who went there came back on the verge of complete insanity as if their mind had been pushed to a place of no return. It seems like this place is host to a plethora of ghosts and demons and I wouldn't recommend going there unless your mind is up to the task. Number one on this list is the Okigahara Forest. And this forest is commonly referred to as the Forest. Located very close to Mount Fiji, this forest boasts a plethora of large trees that are sometimes called the Sea of Trees and are truly a masterpiece of nature. Sadly, this forest has quite the sad history to accompany all of this beauty. You've most likely heard about this forest due to the scandal that happened with Logan Paul several years ago. Him and his team went into this forest to film a video, came upon a dead body of somebody who had committed and were extremely insensitive to the entire situation. This is just one of the instances of how the forest got its name, but since the early 1900s, there have been countless times that have been committed here. In fact, are so prevalent there that there's even a sign at the entrance of the forest reminding people that life is a precious gift. Taking one's life isn't the only thing that's happened at this forest though. This was also a place used to practice yubatsei, which is a horrible, horrible thing. This is where you take an elderly person out in the middle of nowhere and just leave them there to die. Apparently this forest used to be used as a place where people would do this. Through all of this death, the trees and the branches, they don't house just birds and animals anymore. They're deeply haunted as well. So many scary tales have been reported in this forest. A common report is a blood curdling stream that can be heard throughout the entire area. People think that these blood curdling screams are coming from the yure, which are spirits of the dead who have died at sea. Typically these creatures take on the form of a humanoid fish thing with long black hair. Other strange sightings have happened here as well. Vice was doing a documentary of the forest and stumbled upon a very scary skeleton-like doll that was nailed upside down into the tree in a strange crucifixion-like manner. The crew filming believed that this was a curse left behind by somebody who had died there and wanted to stay away from that doll as much as possible. There have also been many sightings of apparitions in this forest and some of them have even been caught on camera before. Not to mention that if you're walking through this forest, you may just stumble on somebody who's committed this forest is overflowing with paranormal activity, and I personally wouldn't recommend visiting. Well, there you have it, guys. That is our list of the top five haunted places in Japan that you should just never visit. In at number five, we have Berlin Citadel. The Citadel was built in 1559 and is known as one of the best preserved military structures in Europe. It was originally built to protect Spandau from attack. Built specifically to have no blind spots, giving an advantage on all sides in the event of an attack. The Citadel has seen a lot of destruction and war since it was built, but the most famous ghost to live there is the spirit of Anna Sido. Anna was married but had a love affair with Joachim the second, the local ruler at the time. As the ruler was dying, he asked his son to take care of Anna. The affair had been frowned upon, but as both of their parents had passed, they had grown closer before he got sick. When he passed, his son didn't keep his promise. He immediately imprisoned her in the citadel. No one ever saw Anna again after that. There was no explanation as to where she had gone or if she had been punished for her love affair with the ruler. There had been reports from visitors of the White Lady, a ghost seen walking around the citadel late at night. Some felt a sudden cold breeze and feeling of dread while 
walking around the grounds, but still there was no explanation. Years later, the citadel was a big tourist attraction and renovations took place. While they began to renovate, they found the remains of Anna. She had been walled into a cell and left there. This seemed to confirm the rumors that she was the white lady for all these years. Some people have seen her late at night, but others have felt her presence. Even after she was found, her spirit had remained. If you visited today, you might catch a glimpse of her if you were to be there after nightfall. Coming in at number 4, we have Svitkov Castle. The origin of Svitkov goes back to the prehistoric times. A fort was built there in the 1st century AD. So it's on the edge of a lake covered in all sides by water, making it the perfect place if you're worried about intruders. The castle was built in the early 13th century by King Otaka. It is not known when it was built, but the first written mention of the castle was in 1234, when it was owned by the King of Bohemia. It had many owners throughout the years, being seized in wars and passed to new rulers. It is now owned by the National Heritage Institute and is open to guests. It is regarded by locals as the creepiest place in Germany. Many refuse to visit or leave before it gets dark as not to disturb the spirits they believe to live there. They believe that the castle is home to a dark supernatural entity. They believe it had been since prehistoric times and has never left the land. There are often voices heard from around the castle. Technical faults happen often with no explanation. It's also been said many animals refuse to go into the building and act strange on the land outside the castle. There have been many times where the staff had lit candles to light up the halls when night falls. There have been times when every candle had been blown out at once, sending chills down the spines of anyone in the area. The most haunted part of the castle is the main tower. There are reports that if you sleep in the tower, you will pass away within the year. There are at least two confirmed cases of this happening throughout the castle's history. Coming in at number three, Osnabrück. Osnabrück was once the site in a major pagan temple and burial area. The pagans decided that they would attempt to convert the German people to the Christian faith. This led to a massacre taking place at the temple. The local forces took the lives of those there, including the priests. They then desecrated the graves and broke their altar stones. The pagans built their temples and buried the dead on sacred land. It is believed that this act disturbed the deep magic infused in the land. Now, every year during the winter solstice and summer equinox, something strange happens on the land. Strange orbs of light have been seen moving around the area. Screams are heard from miles away. Stains appear on the stones that still lay there today. Although the town have now been built away from the graveyard, you can still visit today. Many locals avoid the land as the spirits there seem angry about what happened to their descendants. It is thought these spirits wield great power and could have revenge when and if they choose to. If you do choose to visit, you need to be warned to be respectful. Do your research before and careful when you arrive. Many have reported seeing terrifying things or feelings like being watched while there. No one visits during the solstice and equinox as this is when the spirits are the most active. Coming in at number 2, we have Peacock Island. Peacock Island is situated in the River Havel in Berlin. In 1685, chemist Johann Kupnell was given financial aid to build a glass foundry on the east of the island. Here he discovered how to produce artificial red glass. When he left the island in 1692, it remained unused for about 100 years until 1793. In 1793, the Prussian King Frederick built the castle for himself and his mistress. This was then passed down through the family and used for many different reasons, including being used as an exotic farm. Although the island has a long and exciting history, there are claims it is the original Johann Kucknell who inhabits the island long after his death. It is claimed that Johann was not only into creating glass, but that he experimented with dark magic. It is believed that through his experiments with black magic, he had cursed himself. He attempted to flee the island as to not be attached to the curse, but this didn't work. In the afterlife, he was bound to the land and his old foundry. Those who have visited the island have seen a black figure with glowing red eyes. He is often seen at the stroke of midnight. When he is near, you can feel the chill in your bones. You know that you are in the presence of darkness just by being on the island during his hour. His laboratory still stands today and some have tried to find his old lab to learn all the dark magic and secrets that he tried to hide. It is said a fire nearly destroyed the building. The police believe this to be man-made and it's speculated he was trying to destroy the demons and spirits he had accidentally been working with in the lab. He couldn't escape the curse and if you don't want to meet the same fate, I would avoid visiting this building. And finally in at number 1 we have the Waldneil Hostet School. The school was first built in 1913 and then closed in 1937 when it was then used by the National Socialism Party. They wanted to use the building as part of their euthanasia program. They wanted to make their bloodlines pure and strong and they had the idea to use the building to house anyone who was not seen as genetically healthy. All those with hereditary illnesses or who were severely mentally and physically handicapped were classified as lives unworthy of life. They would invite the people they deemed to fall into this category to live in the 
facility before they would eliminate them. According to data collected, more than 260,000 people fell victim to their war against sick. This was just one of many of these facilities run around Germany. With all of the horrible acts committed here, it is no surprise that it is haunted with the lost souls. The people lost here were taken suddenly and their spirits remain unable to pass on. Some people who have visited reporting hearing blood curdling cries coming up the walls in every direction. Others have seen shadows darting from room to room as though they are watching those who walk there. Other ghosts have been seen looking through the windows or sitting inside the rooms late at night. They don't seem to have bad intentions but they seem to be distraught which can be equally as dangerous if you were to stumble across them unknowingly. Some even claim to see children who have disappeared as soon as they were noticed. The stories from those who have visited are terrifying and chilling to hear. It is enough to warn anyone away from attempting to visit the old school. Coming in at number 5 we have Stalin's country house. Stalin spent 4 months every summer at his country home between 1943 and 1953. Located near downtown Sochi, his time here put his town on the map forever. For anyone unfamiliar with Stalin, he was a dictator for the Soviet Union from the 1930s until his death in 1953. He was responsible for the genocide of around 20 million people. His house had been mostly kept the same and tours are given about the history of his life. The house gives insight into his life and mindset. Part of the home is even a hotel where people can sleep in the same room as the man who created so much destruction. He demanded the house be made completely green so that it could blend in with the surroundings and he would be harder to find. He also refused to have any carpets in the home. He wanted to hear intruders feet on the stone floor if someone was approaching him. He was clearly paranoid even when summering in his country home. He worked from his office during the night with a phone connected directly to Moscow and would sleep during the day. He often changed the room that he slept in so that nobody would know exactly where he was. Stalin's height was around 5'5", which might not seem important, but it was reported that he had short man syndrome due to this and it's reflected in the build. His pool was only 5 feet deep as opposed to the typical 8 feet deep. The house is eerie and unpleasant for many reasons. Not only can you see into the dark mind of the dictator, but you might catch a glimpse of the man himself. People have seen him walking around the home in his white jacket and smoking his trademark pipe. Some have heard footsteps walking around at night. The noise echoes through the home. Those who have stayed there have said the air can feel terrifying at times, like you're being watched or like you're not welcome because you're not. Coming in at number 4 we have St Michael's Castle. St Michael's Castle was built in 1801 for royal residence in St Petersburg. The castle interestingly looks different from each angle as the architects used various styles. It was built like a fortress as the royal family was in fear of assassination. This turned out to not be enough and their fears were validated when Paul I was assassinated. He has moved into the castle 40 nights earlier. He was attacked in his bedroom by a group of dismissed officers. They tried to force him to sign his abdication from the throne. He resisted and the attackers continued. He was succeeded by his son, Emperor Alexander I. After Paul's passing, the family returned to the Winter Palace. The castle was gifted to the army in 1823. In the early 1990s, it became a museum. It is considered that Paul's spirit is now trapped, unable to leave the castle. It seems to be very restless and is often seen by visitors to the museum. He has mostly been seen walking down corridors, carrying a Handle. Others have claimed to hear distant screams from closed off parts of the castle. It echoes in the wall like a whisper. People have reportedly tried to celebrate the spirit and speak with it to bring it peace, but after all these years, it still appears to be restless and angry about what happened all that time ago. Coming in at number three, we have House on the Embankment. The House on the Embankment is a block wide apartment building that was built in 1931. With the relocation of the capital from St. Petersburg to Moscow, there was an increase in housing demand for civil servants. The apartments were luxury for their time including telephones, central heating and high ceilings. When the Great Purge happened in the late 1930s, the residents were detained in their homes. During this time, the building was referred to as the House of Preliminary Detention. As well as the residents, they would bring people they had detained elsewhere and force them into the apartments. Reports say that the apartments hold up to five sets of occupants at one time. During this time, over half of the original 
some residents disappeared. It is believed they had been taken away, but no one ever knew they were simply never seen again. In present day, there are 505 apartments within the building, some used as offices, as well as theatres, restaurants, and retail stores. The Great Purge left a mark on the building that may never shake. Many executions were performed on the premises during this time. It is believed that the building is full of ghosts, victims of that time that cannot move on. Residents have seen paranormal things from within their home that they cannot explain. Some have seen things in the corner of their eyes. It appears like someone is walking around their home, but when they turn to see, they have gone. One terrified resident even reported seeing a man at the end of their bed, staring at them as they slept. When they jumped up from fear, the man disappeared. From all the stories we hear, it seems like the old residents are still attempting to live in their homes, lost and confused about what happened to them. Coming in at number two, we have Griboyedov Canal. The Griboyedov Canal is located in St. Petersburg. It was constructed in 1739 alongside the existing river Krivusha. It is rare that a canal would be haunted, but the haunting is more of a yearly thing that you should avoid at all costs. The story goes back to 1881 with the Russian Empire revolutionary Sofia Perovskaya. She was arrested here and there for the revolutionary talk, but it was her final plan that would become the end of her. When her friend was arrested days before she took over the responsibility of the planned attack on Alexander II. The night before the attack, she helped to assemble the bombs that they were going to use. The attack went off as planned and Alexander II passed away due to her actions. She was quickly captured and was to be trialed for her crimes. Her friend who was arrested the day prior wanted to save his own life and turned in the rest of the participants. They were tried and sentenced to hanging. She was the first woman in Russia sentenced for acts of opposing her country. It was reported that her acts inspired other activists around the world in the years following. The day she died was March 22nd. It is now said that each year on the night of March 22nd, the air is misty. If you were to be walking down the canal, you would see the ghost of a young girl walking up and down the canal. She looks completely blue with a red mark on her neck. The worst part of the tale is that those who meet her become cursed. She is a bad omen. It is even rumoured that she has caused pedestrians their lives. There have been a large number of mysterious disappearances or people falling into the river late at night when no one is around. Luckily she can only appear once a year so as long as you stay clear on that night you should be safe. And finally coming in at number 1 we have Moscow Kremlin. The Kremlin is a world famous fortified complex in the centre of Moscow. It is the best known of the Kremlins and includes 5 palaces, 4 cathedrals along with the enclosing wall and towers. The complex is now the official residence of the President of the Russian Federation, as well as a museum for tourists. Before it was a museum for the public, it was used for the Soviet Union and remnants of this still remain. The corridors are still lined with brown Soviet tiles and the walls still have some of the secret communication wires. There have even been bones uncovered during archaeologists dig in the underground storage rooms. They once buried their own on site, some of the findings date back to medieval times. There are many mysteries hidden within the vast space of the Kremlin. There are still sections of the Kremlin today that go mostly unused and many things may have not been uncovered to this date. There have been wars, forts and secrets kept within the walls and some of them have led to restless spirits trying to contact the living. There have been sightings of various ghosts as well as other unexplained paranormal activity that takes place while guests visit. One of the most common sights is that of an old soldier. At first he seems to blend in with the other security but as you begin to notice his old uniform he will often vanish. He has been seen by different guests on different occasions but no one has been able to get closer to the spirit to see who they are or why they might be there. There have also been sightings of what is believed to be the royal children playing. They were all baptised on site during the 17th century. The monastery was unfortunately blown up in 1929 to make room for the new buildings. Around that site you can sometimes hear children playing and some have even claimed to see children dressed in older looking clothing. It is believed their spirits choose to rest here as it was where they grew up and had a deep connection to the place. These are just a couple of instances of hauntings around the site. Number 5 on this list is the Chateau de Camargue. The Chateau de Camargue is located in Perigord, an ancient region of France. The chateau isn't as beautiful as it once was, some of its former glory lost to time and also to war. The chateau was a critical point of interest in the 100 years war between France and Britain. It was the host to one of the more brutal fights that the war ever saw and was eventually captured by the British. As was typical back then, when you captured a place, many of the people that were running that place were either captured or put to death. One person of interest was put to death by being beheaded and that was the young lover of the daughter of the Earl of Camargue. 
It said that this man was deeply in love with the daughter and that she was in love with him as well. His beheading didn't seem like a major point of interest to the British at the time, but it actually left a bit of a spirit behind. What's really interesting about this story though is that it wasn't the spirit of this young man that was left behind. It also wasn't the spirit of the young daughter or even the Earl of Camarque himself. In fact, it was the spirit of this young man's horse. The horse that this young man rode into battle with to attempt to defend the chateau and the horse that he had his whole life. Its ghost has yet to pass on. It's said that the ghost of this horse wanders the grounds of the chateau searching for its master. People who have ventured into the castle have reported hearing the clicking of hooves and a deep groan from a horse. People have also reported seeing this dead horse's ghost walking around the grounds of the chateau as if it was defending it from potential invaders like it did in the past. It's suggested that if you do intend to visit this chateau that you don't bring any negative energy with you. The horse could potentially interpret this as a threat and come after you. Some have even suggested bringing a carrot or an apple and leaving it at the front of the chateau as a sign of good faith towards this ghostly steed. Number 4 on this list is the Palace de Toulouse. The Palace de Tuileries is home to one of France's most known ghosts who has been nicknamed the Red Man. The Red Man has been around for several hundred years and has two potential stories of origin. The first story talks about a man nicknamed Jack the Skinner worked for Catherine de Medici after her husband Henry II died. He worked as a hitman for her and would be sent to murder potential political foes. He was exceptional at his work but eventually there grew a time where the Queen was worried that he knew too much about about her. After all, he knew exactly how many people she had had executed considering he had done the executing. To make sure her secrets were safe, she had another man murder him. He killed him in the garden, which I should note is typically the area linked to this haunting, and then he left his body in said garden. When he came back to fetch the corpse, it was missing. Then the queen's astrologist told her that he foretold some great disaster happening to the people of Tuileries and that John would be at the forefront of it. Since then, whenever the red man appears, it's said that a tragic event will happen to the people surrounding his appearance. The second origin story is that when this palace was built, the red man was already there. This ghost spoke to Catherine de Medici and foretold her death and even though she forsook him and the palace that she had built, the prediction he had made turned out to eventually be true. Pierre-Jean de Beranger, a famous French poet, describes the Red Man as being a small man clothed from top to toe in scarlet, whose eye is so piercing and unearthly that it terrifies the most courageous. He never speaks, nor air his visits of much length. He vanishes soon after his presence is discovered. This has been echoed throughout time as many French nobles have received visits from the Red Man before. Henry IV, Louis XVI, Mary Antoinette have all had visits from him in the past. There's even a story talking about how the Red Man appeared in front of Napoleon right before his death. There are tons of beautiful palaces in France, and if it was me, I'd avoid this one and go to one of them. Better to be safe than sorry when we're dealing with a devil-like demon whose presence means impending doom. Number 3 on this list is the Rue de Chantre. This is considered by most to be the most haunted streets in France. It's located in Paris on the island and is right next to the Notre Dame Cathedral. This street is said to be haunted by the ghosts of many children. As with most ghost stories, this didn't come out of thin air, but from a horrible tragedy that took place on this street just over 100 years ago. In the early 1900s, there was a hotel that was located on this street. This hotel didn't really act as a hotel though because during that time there was a massive outbreak of tuberculosis. The children in the area who had come down with the disease were sent to this hotel to quarantine. They were locked in the bedrooms of this hotel and couldn't leave at any point for risk of infecting other people. Some children died during these quarantines which is already bad but the main tragedy happened roughly a decade later in 1910. In 1910 there was a great flood of Paris where the river Seine overflowed and flooded the city. All the children that were currently locked inside their bedrooms at this time drowned during that flood. Nobody knows for sure the exact number of children who died in this tragedy, but it was certainly enough to make a spiritual imprint on the street. Now their souls go without rest and live along the street. People have heard the laughter and also the crying of children. They have heard the muffled screams as if they're screaming through water. They've also seen these children before peering out at them from around corners looking extremely sad and lonely. The spot acts as an attraction for supernatural hunters, but a landmark 
that I wouldn't recommend visiting. Number two on this list is Mont Saint-Michel. Mont Saint-Michel is one of the most beautiful and unique castles on the entire planet in my opinion. How it's constructed and where it's located, it almost doesn't even seem like something out of real life. This castle is located off of the Normandy coast and the only connection that it has to France is a road that goes underwater when it's high tide. How this place got made has a bit of a supernatural story to it. Apparently, the Archangel Michael appeared to St. Aubert in a dream and told him to start building here. When he resisted, Michael burned a hole right in his head. After this incident, the castle began its construction and it took quite a while to become the beauty that we have today. It was a work in progress with more things being added over the years. Now because of this castle's location directly in the water, it is extremely hard to attack and was never captured during the 100 years war. During said war, one of the major commanders of this castle was Louis d'Estouville. His ghost is one of the most common sightings at this place. He apparently is responsible for the killing of thousands of English soldiers and had battles that were so deadly the water around them would turn red with blood. He's said to patrol the castle and act as a watchman of sorts for intruders and people posing a threat. Similar to our previous entry of the horse, one of his main objectives is to keep the castle safe. He isn't the only ghost at this spot though. The ghosts of monks can also be seen praying and meditating at this location. For a long time, this castle housed several hundred monks until they were ultimately kicked out from the space. Their spirits still linger in this place though, although they aren't nearly as frightening as the weathered war general, in my opinion. Number one on this list is the Paris Catacombs. The Paris Catacombs is unlike anything else on the entire planet and is the breeding ground for scary stories. These catacombs are a collection of tunnels that are underneath the city of Paris and stretch for over 2,000 acres. The tunnels act as an underground cemetery where they house over six million dead bodies. This is one of the largest collections of the dead in the entire world and if that wasn't enough, you can actually see their skulls as they all line the walls. These catacombs are extremely difficult to navigate. Seeing as there are over 2,000 acres of them and it's underground, people have reported getting extremely lost when they're trying to explore them. This is part of the reason why only a portion of them are open to the public today. But all of this has led to a plethora of ghost stories and legends over the years. For instance, in 2004, a group of police officers were investigating an area of the catacombs that was close to the public and they came upon something unexpected. A bar, a living room, a workshop, and a meeting area for over 20 people, they were all found. This was alongside a PA system, a camera system recording the area, and a pirated means of electricity. All of this was more than suspicious, but when the officers returned a few days later with some more people, everything was gone, except for a note that read, don't search. This isn't all there is to the catacombs though. In the 1990s, a group was searching through them and found a video camera lying on the ground. They picked it up and examined it and saw that there was a recording. The recording was clearly of a man who was very lost in the catacombs and extremely frantic. Scary voices could be heard in the background and the heavy breathing of this man indicated his panic. Finally, the camera fell to the ground and we could hear the man scream. These are just two of the more famous stories to come from these catacombs, but so many other ones of ghosts or demons haunting the area have come from this place. If you were to ever go here, then make sure you have a strong sense of direction and a flashlight because the last thing you would want is to get lost in an underground haunted graveyard. <laughs>